Hello, YouTube world. This is Miss Patty with For Your CNA. Thanks for joining us for our weekly live CNA question and answer session. Um, this is where I give a little mini lesson and I answer all of your questions about CNA training, testing, work, ethics, uh, whatever you guys come up with. Um, I'm here to answer questions for you. Um, I took last week off. I do apologize. I was speaking at a conference out of state. It went fabulously. Um, I'm super excited about all the new contacts that I made uh, with instructors and state leads. And uh, it was a it was a very, very good time. So I'm really, really uh, grateful for the National Consortium of Health Science Educators for inviting me. And I hope to attend again next year. But I'm sorry that I missed you guys. This is really the highlight of my week. I really love getting on here and hearing from all of you. So it looks like we have a couple of people trickling in. So when you get in, please type something in the chat room. Let me know that you're here. Let me know any questions that you have. And uh, while I'm waiting for everybody to come in, I want to talk about a comment that we got on our YouTube channel last week. And this comment came from Jen, that girl. And Jen asks, is it possible to take the CNA test without attending classes? And the answer to that is yes, but only in one state, only in Florida. Florida is very unique. Florida does not require any classroom education at all to take the CNA test. Now, every other state, Anywhere else you go, you have to attend an actual classroom CNA program. And generally speaking, the, the um, requirements for every state are a little bit different. But generally speaking, uh, that class has to be taught by an RN and or at least administered by an RN and taught by an LPN. And it must include some sort of clinicals. Now, whether it's outside clinicals at nursing homes, hospitals, those types of places, or clinical lab experiences where you stay within the clinical facility. Um, but you have to have uh, some sort of clinical experience to be eligible to test. So that's in almost every state out there requires you to go to school, except Florida. <laughs> now, Florida does not um, operate under those rules. And I know it's kind of strange, right? And there's a couple of reasons for it. Um, and let me start off by saying that I'm not in favor of this, okay? Uh, I'm here in Florida. I know why we have these rules this way. But I, and I think that it benefits a lot of people and it definitely benefits the um, nursing home industry as well. But what I don't like about it is that it opens up the opportunity for anyone to operate a test prep class and um, take people's money and not give them an actual education that they think that they're getting. So I'm not in favor of this. Now, let me say I do operate a test prep program, um, but I do that. And we were a state licensed school for many years and we did have the 120 hour program, but the 120 hour programs are very expensive. By the time you pay for an RN and you pay for classroom space and you arrange for outside clinicals and it, there's a lot that goes into it. And it makes those programs very, very expensive for students. So it's actually cheaper to operate something that isn't regulated, you know, and that, that you don't have to pay all those fees for. So I understand the, the benefit of a test prep, and that's why I operate one. I also understand the drawbacks to it. So if you're in Florida and you decide to take a test prep, you really want to look at a couple of very specific things. Number one, who's teaching the class and what qualifications do they have to teach that class? Um, if they are a CNA that just got licensed three weeks ago, you probably don't want to be learning from that individual because they don't have enough experience or knowledge or or um, just, you know, that they really aren't qualified to teach you. Um, so make sure that you know who is teaching you. 
Uh, make sure that you know how long they've been around. If this is somebody that just opened up in their garage three weeks ago, I would really question whether they're, um, you know, in it for the right reasons. So make sure you do your homework. Now, when it comes to testing, so in Florida, all roads lead to the same test. Everybody has to take the exact same test. So if you're coming in as a challenger, you had no classroom training or you attended a test prep or um, your mom who's a nurse taught you, if you're a challenger, you're taking the exact same test as somebody who went to a 120 hour state approved CNA licensed program. It's the same test. When you pass the test, you get the same certification. You get the same blue card. So there's no um, there's no detriment to challenging the state exam in Florida. You're getting the same credentials. It allows you to work in the same places, making the same amount of money. Um, but the problem is that you're you may not be as well prepared to function in that workplace. So there's a big difference between passing the test and being able to operate successfully in a workplace. They really are two different things. They shouldn't be, but they really are. Um, and I've seen this time and time again, people that study super hard, they watch lots of videos, they take a, a class, they, they study super hard, they get to the test and they pass it. And then they get into a clinical setting and they're like, oh, I didn't know I was going to have to do this. I'm, I'm not, you know, this isn't what I wanted to do. And um, it, it can really, so what ends up happening is, you know, these individuals, they get into a workplace, they realize that they're really not prepared to work as a CNA. They were prepared to pass a test and they end up washing out. You know, they quit, they go somewhere else, they leave healthcare altogether. And we simply can't afford that right now because we are so short staffed in healthcare. It's not funny. We need to be recruiting everybody we see. If you've got a family member that you think would be a good caregiver, you need to be recruiting them and tell them how wonderful being a CNA is and get them to come into the industry. Because guys, we're going to be short staffed forever until we can get more people in. And if you're out there telling people how horrible it is, they're not going to come in. Right. So we need to be recruiting actively for our industry and try to get people to come in and, and train as CNAs and get employed as CNAs and work as CNAs. And that will collectively lead to better patient care. It'll lead to better staff assignments. It will lead to, um, you know, not having to work so short staffed and having way too many patients. So better uh, staffing ratios. There's a lot of benefit to it recruiting other people to come in. And the nice thing is in Florida, you do not have to attend a class to be able to test. So a question I get asked all the time is, well, why? Why does every other state require, and, and that's a federal requirement, by the way, require at least 75 hours of classroom training, but Florida gets away with not having that training? And the answer to that is simply supply and demand. Remember that most that Florida is the number one retirement state. Most people that live up north, when they retire, they come to Florida because we have good weather, low cost of living, no state income tax. So it's a great place to retire. And Florida has built much of its industry on servicing retired individuals. So we have this huge amount of people that come to Florida to retire and they age while they're here and they require services. So Florida has a proportionately higher um, need for CNAs and it's a need that schools, the way they're set up right now, just can't fill all on their own. This system, not requiring CNAs to complete an actual classroom program, also allows the facilities themselves to teach you. 
So it opens it up for on the job training. And that's the real reason that in Florida, CNAs can challenge the exam because it allows nursing homes and assisted living facilities and rehabs to recruit people off the street, train them in house and then send them for the test without having to uh, become a licensed educational provider to do that. So it helps meet the needs of the patients in Florida. That's why it's set up a little bit different. But every other state requires that you go to class to be a CNA. So let's see who's here today. Summer, hi, thanks for coming. Nick Nick Christie says, first time here. Oh, well, welcome. We love having new people. I hope you join us again. And Nick Christie's been watching our videos. Well, thanks. I've got something really super exciting coming up that I'm going to talk to you guys about in a minute. Um, Blue says, I was going to ask why Florida's not required um, and let you challenge. And, and I answered that, Blue. It's, it's very interesting when you start delving into the history of the test. Um, Belkin, hi. Melissa says, hi. Good day, everyone. Stella says, please, I want to know how to measure, calculate water, food, and urine. Okay, I'll get to that in just a second, Stella. Katie says, good evening. I recently completed my CNA program in New York. However, I'm moving to Florida in April. If I do my state board in New York, will I have to redo it when I move to Florida? Oh, Katie, that is an awesome question. So the way it works is this. Every single state, and, and Stella, I didn't forget about you. I will come back. <clears throat> Every single state has their own registry. So there's no national registry. There's no single place that you can go that allows you to work in all 50 states. So when you take your test and you get certified in New York and then you move to Florida in April, you're going to contact the Florida Board of Nursing. And to get there, it's floridasnursing.gov. That's their website. If you go onto my website, I have a list of all the CNA registries for every 50 states. It's easy to, um, it'll link you right over to their website. So go to floridasnursing.gov and you contact them and let them know that you were a New York CNA, you've moved to Florida and you want reciprocity. Now what reciprocity is, is it means that Florida gives you a CNA certification based on the fact that you already have one somewhere else. Now, not all states have reciprocity agreements with other states. There are some states that will um, allow people from some states in, but not others. There are some states that say, hey, wait, we make everybody test with our test here. So you may have to go through retesting. And then there's uh, one or two states that say, uh, not so fast. We want everybody to go through our training and testing because we don't know what how everybody else was trained out there. We want them trained according to our guidelines. So you really need to find out when you're planning on moving what the reciprocity rules are in the state that you're going to. And this takes a little bit of time. So don't try to do this on Friday when you're moving on Monday. So give yourself a couple of weeks to get this done. But I do know that as of right now, um, the, the last information I had um, New York CNAs can apply for a certification in Florida. It's a small fee. You have to go through a background check, but you won't have to retest or take the class. So I hope that helps. Um, Caroline says, uh, hi, I'm trying to be an independent home care CNA. Do you think government insurance companies can pay me or only private pay patients? All right, Caroline, I'm going to come back to that in just a minute because that is a way bigger topic than just a one word answer. So let me come back to that in just a second. Uh, Blue says, to me, the way Florida does CNA training, it opens the door to learn skills, tasks very wrong, and sets you up to fail in the workplace. And that is something that we do see, Blue, unfortunately. How do you, how you do the test versus real world are two different things. Um, yeah, so let me talk to you about that. I actually had a conversation with an instructor uh, last week over this. And something that's said in a classroom quite often is, well, I'm going to teach you the test way. And then there's a different real world way. And, you know, so instructors like to try to separate out test versus real world. And ideally, there really should be no difference. Because if I tell you, if you're sitting in my classroom and I tell you, OK, so this is the way we're going to do it in, for the test. But when you get out of the real world, you'll learn other things. Well, that just tells you that everything I'm going to teach you is completely and totally worthless to you beyond the test. So why would you listen? And so that's not the message we want to send. 
when we're training, we really want to train using real world examples and real world techniques. And there should not be a difference between testing standards and real world standard standards. It really should be universal all across the board so that your training becomes effective. And but unfortunately, we see a lot of instructors out there that do that that say, okay, well, this is the way you do it for the test. This is the way you do it in real world. And, and it, that doesn't help the student. That All that does is lead to a lot of uncertainty. And those are the people that when they get out there in the real world, have no idea what they're doing. So it's really important that you get an instructor that understands that principle and that is preparing you not just for the test, which is what a lot of people will focus on, not just for the test, what I tell my students when they come into class is, I know you're here to learn how to pass the test. That's your focus and that's appropriate, but that's not my focus. My focus is to, to train you for the day after the test. When you have to go to work on real, live humans that expect you to know what to do to care for them properly and safely. And that's my focus. My focus is always on the day after the test. So once you get done with the test, now what? So you really wanna make sure that you have an instructor that can um, bridge that gap successfully. So uh, great observation, Blue. Colleen says, good evening. Passed my test the first time. Congratulations, Colleen, on the 29th. That is awesome. Hi, Hannah. Is there any reason an LPN should take the CNA test? No. LPNs can work as CNAs in every state. LPNs supersede CNA. So no, there's no benefit to you taking the CNA test. Uh, Lou says, would a hospital take me in as a PCT with just a CNA certification? Uh, yes, a lot of hospitals, most hospitals actually, will hire you as a CNA and then provide the additional training that you need to be a PCT. Because at PCT, actually, uh, the additional training is really going to depend on what, what unit you're working on. If you're going to be working in a telemetry unit, you need to learn EKG. I mean, that's just, you need to learn it. But if you're going to work in a mother baby unit, that EKG isn't going to do you any good because our moms aren't hooked up to um, telemetry units. So it really depends on where in the hospital you're going to be working as to what additional skills you would need. So most hospitals will provide that additional training. You just have to look around. Now, I know if you've got an HCA hospital close to you, um, look around. They're all over the country. They're the biggest hospital group out there. But if you have an HCA hospital, they actually have a program called the Star Tech program that takes CNAs and turns them into PCTs and they pay for the training. Um, and they offer it several times a year at hospitals all over the country. So that's something you might want to look into. HCA hospitals have that program. And they actually have something called a pre-tech in certain markets that uses my program, my book, and my uh, online course to train people from entry level to that, that uh, PCT. So that's another opportunity for you. Um, Paulette says, first time here, but I've been watching. Hi, Paulette. Your videos help a lot. I did my exam Tuesday this week in Florida. I passed the practical but failed the written. Okay, Paulette, I'm going to come back to you in just a second. Shirley, hi. Luz, hi. Uh, Fado, uh, first time here, but I do watch your videos. Hi. Um, Ket Ket Ketley, said hello. Um, okay, Paulette, you didn't waste time. You already filled out the application to retake. Good. That's very good. So hold on one second. Judith, congratulations on passing the exam on October 15th. Great job. And Callister is watching from Dubai. That's amazing. Thanks for joining us. That's awesome. Okay. So I want to go back up and talk about what Stella has. Okay. And then I'm going to come back down and, and um, talk to Paulette. So Stella, Stella wants to know how to measure, calculate food, water, and urine. So Stella, you're going to want to go onto my, um, let me see here. If you go onto YouTube and type in classroom lectures, you're going to want to, want to watch the one for feeding and for emptying the urinary drainage bag, because I have long lectures. I mean, they're probably 
30, 45 minutes long. And it's not something that I can cover in detail in this question and answer session here. Um, so go find, go onto YouTube on my channel, go onto fouryourcna.com. It's number four, Y-O-U-R-C-N-A um, on YouTube. And then when you're in my channel, type in classroom lecture feeding and classroom lecture drainage bag. When you do that, you'll find those particular um, lectures. They're, they're kind of hidden. They're not like out there at the front end for everybody to see. You have to search for them. But if you go watch those, they will help you tremendously. Now, I don't know if you've got my book, but if you have my book on page 33, I have a, a whole um, vital sun activity on page 72. I have a whole um percentage activity for um, estimating e a food percentage and liquid calculations um, on page 10 or 114 I have a whole lesson on drainage bag so if you um, if you have my book those pages will help you as well okay um, Stella you watched them already well the if you watch the class, I'm not talking about the um, skills demonstration. That's not what I'm talking about. I have a whole lecture. It's me standing in my classroom, talking to the camera just like this. So those classroom lectures are what you need to watch because it's not really something that I can. I, I need a visual because on the screen, I've got on screen um pictures and stuff to help. So you need to go watch those. So look up classroom lecture. Um, Fato, how can you get the book? If you go onto my website for your CNA.com, click on shop, all of my stuff is there. I have the book, I have flashcards, I have a super fun CNA card game. We have a practice kit. I have classroom banners. I have all kinds of stuff on there that will help you as well. That's how you get the book. All right, so let me go back to um, what Paulette says. Paulette passed the skills but failed the written. So, Paulette, I want to talk to you specifically here. There's five things that you need to remember when you're taking the written test, five main things that they're going to be um, testing you on. And I actually have them written down right here because I'm going to do a lesson on them. <laughs> so when you're taking the written test, they're going to be grading you on patient rights. And this is number one. You're going to have a lot of questions on patient rights. And this is the one subject that most people mess up on for the written test. Because the questions are going to be written in a way to see if you are likely to treat an adult like a child. And this, um, because that, that's not allowed. It's, it's flat out not allowed. You have the right as an adult to make decisions for yourself. And nobody's going to come along and tell you that you cannot have an, a, a cookie at 2 a.m. when you get up and you can't sleep. There's nobody there saying, no, 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 you can't do that. You have the right to make decisions for yourself. You even have the right to make bad decisions for yourself. That's your right. You can stay up too late. You can drink too much. You can decide to smoke. You can eat French fries. You can make bad decisions for yourself. That's your right. Now, as caregivers, we're just there to help patients. We're not there to enforce um, behavior, okay? So we can't keep somebody from smoking if they want to smoke. We just have to make sure they're safe doing it. We can't keep a diabetic from eating candy. We just have to let the nurse know what we see. We can't restrict activity. We can't punish. We can't um, modify behavior. That's not our role. It's never our role. So all we do is help the patients. We follow the care plan and we report everything to the nurse. Now, the nurse can certainly offer education about why that candy might not be a good idea. We can um, offer education to the patient about why smoking um, may not be um uh, you know, a, a good idea, right? Um, we can't um, we can't make somebody do something, but we can educate them on why it's a good choice. So, a lot of people that come into healthcare, 
don't understand this. They think that we, as healthcare providers, have the right to tell people what they should and shouldn't do and then force them to do that. And that is absolutely untrue. So you're going to have a lot of questions on the written test about patient rights. And it's super important that you never, ever choose a selection that treats an adult like a child. So keep that in mind. So that's number one is patient rights. Number two is um, safety. So safety is both your safety and the patient's safety. So there's going to be quite a few questions on safety. So you really want to understand those safety principles, especially fire safety. So if you didn't learn about fire safety in your program, you need to go look it up. And what we have to remember for fire safety in a clinical setting is the acronym R-A-C-E. So that's RACE, R-A-C-E. R is for remove the residents. That's step one. No matter what, I don't care how small the fire is, you have to get everybody out of the room. So remove. A is for activate your alarm system. So pull the alarm, let somebody know, call the switchboard, whatever your protocol is in your, in your setting, activate your emergency response system. C is for contain the fire. So we need to close the door or close the unit. We don't want that fire spreading anywhere. And then if it's small enough, if it's small enough, then we can um, try to extinguish it. But notice that extinguish is way down the list. We have to get everybody out of the way. We've got to let somebody know. We've got to contain the fire. And then we can try to extinguish if we think it's manageable for us to do so. So safety is going to be a really big deal on the state exam, especially fire safety. You also have to know your role. Now, the role of the CNA is quite simple. CNAs follow the care plan. They do routine tasks on stable patients, and they report everything to the nurse. That is a CNA and a thumbnail. You have to know that. Anything outside of that is not your role. The fourth thing that you'll be tested on are normal. So what is normal with uh, aging skin? What is normal for hormone levels when you age? What is normal for meals as you age? What is not? Know your normals. And then the last thing that they're going to test you on is infection control. And this is going to be a really big deal on the state exam, especially because of COVID. We want to make sure we know how to put on and take off um, personal protective equipment or what we call PPE. So all of that is going to be what the written test is going to focus on. So I hope that helps you and best of luck to you on uh, retaking the exam. If you go onto my website for your CNA.com, let me just put my website in here for you guys. So it's for your CNA.com. If you go onto my website, um, I have up at the top, you'll see training, testing, after certification, and more. If you go under training and you hover over that, um, you know, click on it so you get that menu that comes down, click on animated lessons. And those animated lessons are designed specifically for the written test. So go watch those and they'll get you where you need to be for the written test and good luck. All right. So let's see here. Um, Katie asks, any idea what agencies won't hire CNAs for HHA positions? No, because CNAs by law can work as home health aides. If you are a CNA, then um, you can work as a home health aide, um, at least in most states. I, I'm not familiar about the laws for home health aid for all states, but for the majority, the ones that I have checked, um, CNAs can work as home health aides. It's just a matter of whether they, um, you know, whether the, the agency wants to hire a CNA for that position, because let's face it, they have to pay CNAs more. And if you're doing just regular friendly neighbor stuff, you know, personal care, then, um, 
you know, why would they want to hire a CNA to do that when an HHA can come much cheaper? Um, so some of it is going to be what the facility or the agency is willing to hire for. So let's see here. Uh, Fatal says, and I'm so sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I, I do apologize. Um, I did my test, but I didn't pass both the written and the skills. So everything I just said about the written, <laughs> go watch the animated lessons. Pay attention to those five things I just talked about. Patient rights, safety, know your role, um, infection control, and know your normals. Uh, for skills, watch my videos. And remember to follow the care plan. It's the care plan, the whole care plan, and nothing but the care plan. If the care plan tells you to do range of motion on the left shoulder, you're only going to do range of motion on the left shoulder. Make sure you're on the correct side. That's super important because you're being graded on following that care plan. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Lou says, uh, thank you. I'll check out the Star Tech program for sure. Stella says, I watched them already. Fatal says, uh, how can I get the book? Go to my website and click on shop. Uh, Diana says, hello. Hi. Monique says, good afternoon. Ramsey says, hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Vid Vidya? Vidya, I'm not sure how to say that. Hi, Miss Patty. I took my CNA class test yesterday. I passed the written. I'm waiting for results for the skills. I watched your videos a lot. Thank you so much. Oh, that's so wonderful. Well, um, congratulations on passing the written. We're going to keep our fingers crossed for the skills. I'm sure you did fantastic, though. If not, make sure you apply right away to retest. Um, Faylene says, how can I get the book? Just go to foryourcna.com, click on shop, and it's in there. Uh, Paulette says, thank you. Chanel says, I have my CNA exam tomorrow. Pray for me. Well, we will. We're going to keep our fingers crossed and send all good thoughts out to the cosmos. But you've got this. Just remember to follow the care plan. If there's one piece of advice I can give anybody getting ready to test, follow the care plan. If the care plan tells you to stand on one foot while you're doing the skill, stand on one foot while you're doing the skill. Follow the care plan. Think of it like a giant game of Simon Says. Okay. Uh, Blue says, Patty, can I email you the state requirements for Washington State regarding home health aid training? Um, Blue, you can. You can get in touch with me uh, through my um, website. I have a contact me page. But to be very, very honest with you right now, I cannot take on any new projects. I am so overloaded right now. It's not even funny. Um, I, I would love to be able to help you, Blue, but I just honestly, I just can't fit it in right now. Um, but if you want to get in touch with me, go ahead. Madeline says, hi, Miss Patty. And Blue says, I think you'll find it interesting too much to put in here. I find what you talk about here helpful in teaching home care classes. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you find it helpful. Um, let's see here. Merlan says, hi, Patty. Just needed to say thank you. I passed the CNA exam three weeks ago just by watching your videos religiously. Do you have anything to help me pass the NCLEX exam? I'm a foreign nurse. Ooh, very good. Um, no, I really don't. The NCLEX is, and it depends if you're coming at it from the LPN or RN side. I'm not real sure which side you're coming from, but um, I really don't have much advice for the NCLEX just because it is so, the, the topic is just so huge. And where do I even start? You know, there's, you know, nursing basics, there's maternity, there's peds, there's um, critical care. You've also got, you know, things like uh, EKG and blood gas analysis and acid base balance. And there's just so much there that there's no way for me to kind of sum it up. Um, I would, you know, certainly look into maybe th there are lots of companies out there that do preparation for the NCLEX like Kaplan. Um, I would look into one of those because that's their specialty. My specialty is in the CNA arena. Their specialty is in nursing. So I would really, I, I'd really rather stay in my lane. <laughs> so I would encourage you to uh, seek out one of those. But thanks for using us to get your CNA. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. All right. So let me tell you guys 
what I've got going on and um, what I'm working on, because this is like super exciting to me. So this has been a dream of mine for a very long time to be able to create um, scenario style uh, interactive videos. So like you would be watching the video and then all of a sudden it would stop and you'd have some choices and it's going to tell you, what do you do next? Do you turn on the water? Do you get soap on your hands? Do you get your paper towels? What's the next step? And then when you click on it, it will either continue the video or it's going to explain to you why. So kind of like a choose your own adventure, right? With, with video. Um, and I actually now have the resources I need to do that. And I'm starting on creating these interactive videos. Now, this is a huge project. I mean, just a huge project. Um, but I'm hoping, all right, keep our fingers crossed, to have the first one up on my website um, by the end of this month. I'm currently working on it. Um, like I said, it's a really big project to do, but stay tuned because I'm going to tell you guys about it. And then I'm going to ask you to go over and take a look at it once it's done and ready and up there. And then you guys can give me your feedback because I really want to make sure that I'm doing this in a way that will help you guys learn along the way. So I'm really, really excited about this. But one of the other things that I'm going to do with this platform is, you know, one of the hardest parts of being a CNA is knowing what to say. Uh, not just for the skills. I mean, for the skills, you just kind of parrot what I say, you know, in the videos. But in a clinical setting, you know, when a patient asks you something, a lot of times it's like deer in the headlights. Oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. What do I say to that? So I'm going to be developing what we call soft skills videos or communication videos that are scenarios that you might find in a clinical setting. Like what, um, you know, what your patient just found out that they have a terminal illness and they're expected to die within the next six months and you walk in and they're crying. What do you do? What do you say? You know, what, what's the right response to that? And so these videos are going to kind of help tackle some of those really hard topics. And I'm really, really excited about, um, being able to develop this. So that's a really big, big project that, um, that I'm working on. So stay tuned for that. So Caroline, uh, thank you for the reminder. Please don't forget about my question. Let me go back up here and find yours. Okay. Independent home care CNA. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. So I'm going to leave you on this. So independent home care CNA, I'm going to tell you pros and cons. There's a lot of people doing it and it can be very lucrative, but so here's the pros, right? When you go to work for an agency, they take a cut. That's just the way it is. They're going to take on the client. The client pays them. They hire you. They give you an hourly wage or a visit wage or whatever. So they're taking a cut. Now, if you put an ad out on Craigslist or care.com or any of those places and you hire out independently, of course, there's no agency to take a cut. So now they're paying you direct means more money. But there's a trade-off there. So the first problem is that remember CNAs follow the care plan. We are there to perform tasks that the nurse deems appropriate. Now the nurse is the one that's going to go in and do a head-to-toe assessment, figure out what the patient needs, real problems, potential problems, develop a care plan, and that goes to you and you're going to follow the care plan. That's the way it works. The nurse is accepting liability for that. So if the nurse forgets something and doesn't put it on the care plan, that's on them. If the nurse puts something on the care plan that's wrong, that's on them. Even if you do it, that's because the care plan is your instruction manual. The nurse is always assuming the liability for what you are doing when you're following the care plan. That's the way it is. Now, when you go out there and you start working on your own, there is no nurse. There is nobody else to accept liability, period. So you are on the hook. So if you decide to do something with that patient and it results in injury, 
you are liable. So you have to consider that. That's number one is when you're working independently, now you are assuming liability. The second problem is that when you have an agency, so when a family hires an agency, they hire you, now you've got an intermediary. So let's say that uh, you're working with a patient, she has dementia, and she accuses you of stealing a ring. Well, now there's an agency involved that can investigate it, that can, um, you know, look and see, you know, does the patient have dementia? Is she capable of making these sorts of um, accusations? You know, does she have memory impairment? You've got somebody to be in your corner. Now, if you're hiring out independently, there is nobody. It's now you versus them, and that can be a problem. There's also a problem with pay. So yes, you get paid more if you're going direct to a individual. So let's say a daughter who lives in New Jersey hires you to care for her mom who lives here. And she's not near us. She's, you know, she sends you a check. You're there taking care of her mom and you work for two weeks and you're waiting for your check to come in the mail and no check. And you're waiting for your check and no check. And you're still taking care of mom and no check. And you call her up and you say, hey, where's my check? And she says, oh, yeah, it's in the mail. And another week goes by and no check. Well, who do you, there, there's nobody to complain to. Who are you going to complain to? So it having an agency actually affords you some protection. Now, the other problem with independent contractors is that you are there because they need you, not because they just, you know, if I hire somebody to come help clean my house, right? It's not because I can't do it myself. It's just because I'm too busy. I don't have time. I don't want to, whatever. And I'm willing to pay somebody else to do that. But if they don't show up, it's not the end of the world. But when you're doing caregiving tasks, when somebody hires you to be a caregiver, it's not because they can do those tasks. And, and if you don't show up, it's no big deal. They're hiring you because they can't do those tasks. They're physically incapable. You need to be there. This isn't a want. This is a need. So what happens if you're hired independently, no agency, just you and them, and your car dies? You get four flat tires and you can't go to work. Well, there's no one else to do it. So what happens then? You know, if you're working for an agency, you call up your boss, you say, hey, I can't get to work today. And now it's their problem. They got to figure it out. They got to get somebody else in there. But if you're working independently and you can't show up for work, that could very well mean that you are fired because if you can't do that job, there's nobody else to do it. So that's a problem. And that causes a lot. I mean, way more issues than than you would think it, it does because things happen. The other problem with this is that you are now responsible for taxes. And what most people do not understand about working for another person, let's say that I hire you. I, I have an agency. I hire you as a CNA. And when I write out your paycheck, I take taxes out of your paycheck. And we've all seen that on our check stub, you know, Social Security, Medicare, FICA, all that stuff comes out of your pay. Um, and you look at your check, you go, wow, the government is taking all my money, right? What you don't see on the other side of that is that everything that the employer just took out, everything that, that I took out of your check to send to the government on your behalf for taxes, I have to match. So if your check is missing $40 from taxes, I had to come up with another $40 to match that, to send that to the government. Now, when you're working independently, you are responsible for both portions. So you have to take out, you know, the $40 that the employer would have withheld and the employer's portion as well. So remember that when it comes to working independently, there are a lot of things that you have to evaluate. Don't just look at, oh my gosh, I would get paid $4 more an hour if I did this on my own, if I didn't have the agency. That may be true. 
but there are a lot of things that agency is doing for you for that money that you probably aren't even aware of. So be really, really careful when it comes to working independently, especially when you look at the liability aspect of it. Um, it's not something that I recommend for CNAs. I think the risk is very high. But if that's something that you feel the need to do, um, let's say you have a neighbor that wants to hire you. Um, it's something that, you know, you can entertain, but there you need to be aware of the negative aspects of it as well. Now, something that you asked here, do I think government insurance companies can pay you or only private pay patients? You cannot contract with the government directly as an individual. You can't call up Medicare and say, I'm a CNA. I'm going to take care of this patient over here. Can you pay me? It doesn't work like that. Government pay, government contracts have to be awarded to a um, some sort of an agency, a company. And the contracts are fairly competitive. They're, they're, they're not easy to get. There, there's a lot of things they have to go through because let's face it, you know, the government has deep pockets and everybody wants to get something out of that pocket. So there is a lot of um, fraud when it comes to government money. So it's not as easy as just working as an individual and getting paid by the government. Um, now you can um, sometimes get paid through private pay insurance. You can work for an organization like CARES which allows you to work as an independent contractor, but secures those government funding to pay you. So yeah, th there are some kind of, you know, twisty turny ways around that. But generally speaking, it's going to be more of a private pay type of situation. I hope that helps. Um, give, I hope that gave you guys something to think about when it comes to, um, working independently. It's it's very tempting. I know. I, I get it. I know. But you do have to kind of evaluate what you're getting when you're working with an agency, not just what they're taking. Okay. All right, guys. I hope that uh, you have a fantastic week. I hope that everything treats you very well in this first week of November. Today is my mom's birthday, so I'd like to say a shout out to my mom. Happy birthday, mom. And I will um, see you guys next week, Thursdays at 3 on my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and then ring that little bell. I know they make you do all this stuff, but if you do all that, YouTube will let you know when I go live. Uh, check out my card game. It's super fun. I'm going to be ordering uh, some new, uh, a whole new batch coming up shortly. And um, I think that's it for this week. See you guys next week. Have a great week. Bye.